Hello and welcome back to how to use AWeber. This is class two of seven in setting up our AWeber account. My name is Terry Bork. I'm a divorce mom of two amazing teenagers and I became involved in social media marketing because of an income cap placed on me by corporate America and the only way for me to provide for my family and be do and have everything that I wanted was to forge my own path and that's what I'm doing. And today what we're going to talk about is actually creating that confirmation email when people opt into your list. Okay, so on this class, um, let's go through what we're going to be learning. First, we're going to be learning, um, we learned how to set up our AWeber and why you would need to have an AWeber account. On this AWeber tutorial, class two, we'll actually create that confirmation email. On future tutorials, we're actually going to create the follow-up message, create a broadcast message, we'll create a web form, and finally I'll show you how to become an affiliate with AWeber. Uh, that way you can start generating income yourself when you show other people how to use their AWeber account. Okay, so what we're going to want to do first is head on over to that AWeber account that we just created, and up on the top you'll see the link that says My List. So let's go over there right now. Okay, um, here we are over at our AWeber account. And we're going to click on this blue tab that says My Lists. And you'll see over here on the left, it'll say Manage Your Lists. And over here on the right, you are going to click on Create a New List. Now keep in mind that from time to time, AWeber does um, change their layout just a little bit. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just look for it. Create My List and you'll be great to go. Okay, so here we are over at information and this is where we're going to start to in edit, uh, enter information about what this um, list is going to talk about. The first thing we're going to do, you'll notice, is that over here on the right, should you get stuck with anything, there'll be a box relating to this field on the left and it will tell you what to enter in case you get stuck. You'll see over here it says default and a number. Um, remember that your list will be able to see, your lead, I'm sorry, will be able to see what the list is about, so you're going to want to change default over to whatever it is that you're discussing. Now it should relate to your topic, so if you're talking about stopping your dogs from barking, this shouldn't say organic gardening. So make sure you know what your subject is when you're creating your specific list. Okay, you'll just highlight it and backspace to remove it and then enter in whatever, your your, whatever this list is going to be talking about. My list is going to be t talking about how to stop your dog from barking. Um, you'll notice right now it's in red. That's because somebody else already owns this name, Barkery. So I want to pick something different. So I select a number, which um, you know tells me which list um, to look for. So I can look at um, tracking my blogs. You want a list for various um, each various thing that you do, so you know what is working for you in your when you're doing your day-to-day -day work. So if you have several blogs out there, don't send them all to the same list location and the same message. Actually create one for each list that you have so you know which one is working. So I have four different blogs that relate to stopping your dog from barking and the best way for me to monitor my traffic and everything is to have a list for each one. So this is going to be um, Barkery 2. Remember that your lead can see it. They also can see your description, so you're going to want to put in something in there that makes sense to you and will make sense to your reader of your um, broadcast message. So I'm going to write um, helping, oops, helping dog owners stop their dog from barking. Something that's going to relate specifically to my um, the title of my of what these messages are about. Next is our from area. You're going to want to enter in your name here and then your email address. You should avoid using things like Yahoo or AOL. You're actually going to want to use your, um, you know, a, a, a message uh, from your company email name. So if you went to GoDaddy and you got a domain, you're going to want to also get an email from that domain. Okay, just keep that in mind. The next thing is your contact information. You've previously set that up. Um, when you set up your, your, your initial AWeber account, so it will default to that. Should your address, you want to make it a different address, you can edit it at any time. But under the Can Spam Act, you're required to have your address on all your communication. Company name. This is where you can enter in the name of your company, or you can leave it blank. 
for me personally, I want to have a personal relationship with the people who are on my list. So I actually put my name in here, okay? Your choice. Um, the website URL. This will direct the people who are part of my list back to the website or the blog that relates to what I'm talking about. So I put that link in here as well. HTTP colon my, my location the logo or the logo URL um, that's if you have an image that uh, specifically relates to your product you can slap that right in there and then your email signature um, you can enter it in here should you want to use it here okay um, for you can create a web form as well um, you can leave it checked or uncheck it that's up to you we'll talk about that in a future tutorial and then notifications down here. If you want to be notified every time somebody opts into your list, you actually would enter your information right here and the email address where it would send you a, hi, Jane Doe, subscribe to your list. Um, you don't have to do that, I don't. It was fun in the beginning when people didn't know who I was and I was excited that somebody was reading my material. But after a while, when my list started to grow, um, it just became a lot of email for me to go through on a daily basis. Okay, once we've done all that, we're going to save our list settings, and that's going to take us over here to the next page, and this is where we have a decision to make. This is where we can say whether or not we want to have our lead confirm um, whether or not they wanted to receive correspondence from us. You can leave it on, or you can turn it off. On this tutorial, I'm just going to show you that you're going to turn it off, um, and we're just going to do that so that, you know, we can move on to the next step in the process. In our next tutorial, I'll show you what happens and how to set it up if you'd like to leave it on. And it's just, you know, it's the difference between a single opt-in and a double opt-in, and the choice, again, is up to you. So I want to say yes, I, I want to disable this form, so I'm gonna click yes. You'll notice the green on turns to a red off, and I am done with this page. I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna click save list settings. And you'll see that it is completely saved. It's just a single opt-in, and we're good to go. My Barkery 2 has been created. So that's all that I wanted to share with you at this time on um, creating this list. On our next list, again, we'll talk about how to change that confirmed opt-in status to um, you know, a double opt-in, the steps that you need to take, and then we'll actually talk about creating follow-up messages. All right, uh, if you have any questions at all, please give me a call, 813-863-1452. Again, 813-863-1452. My name is Terry Bork. If you found this information at all helpful, please share it with a friend, and I look forward to seeing you on tutorial number three. Make it a great day. Take care.